Welcome to Berkeley Middle East. This is CFA video series. Today we are going to discuss the study session related to financial statement analysis. Broadly we are going to discuss the four study sessions 7, 8, 9 and 10. In study session 7 we are going to discuss the financial statement as an introduction uh, what are the financial statements who use them how the accounting has been done so far for making the financial statement what are the rules regulations what standards are being settled then we will discuss the financial statement itself balance sheet income statement statement of changes in equity and the additional disclosure and supplement tables that we need to uh, comprehend the financial statement explanations. Then moving ahead we have inventories, we have uh, tax, we have uh, the debts and uh, then we have to discuss the deferred taxation and uh, its financial impacts. In the last we are going to discuss uh, the financial strength and uh, operational efficiency uh, mainly by using the ratio analysis tools uh, to assess the uh, capability of the uh, capability and the financial health of the company. Three major topics we are going to discuss in the study session seven, which is, which is what uh, what are the financial statements, then what is the financial reporting mechanism. And in the last, we are going to discuss the financial reporting standards, how the standards are settled. Now, uh, what is the role of financial statement and financial statement analysis in, uh, for uh, the investors and uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the lenders and overall for the overall stakeholders? Why we study this uh, financial accounting and the statement analysis in the CFA level one because uh, for an analyst it's very important to understand the accounting and financial terms. When we discuss the quantitative, we discuss the ethics, we discuss the economics and the equity and investment and derivative parts. This is very important but all is being materialized in the financial statements. So, it's very important for a financial analyst to understand what is accounting, how it works, what is a general ledger, what is general journal, what is trial balance, what is a financial statement, what are the types of financial statements and how we can assess the statements by using different financial analyst, uh, analysis so we can reach to a conclusion about the financial strength and the operational efficiency of the company. Broadly, the questions are not uh, so much uh, descriptive, they are more analytical. We don't need to learn here in CFA what is debit and what is credit. In fact, we are more concerned where the work of a CPA or ACCA is finished, where they have made the financial statements and it is it comes to in our domain for the analysis. In this study session, we are going to discuss uh, what is income statement, what is balance sheet, what is, uh, state, uh, what is cash flow and uh, what is the statement of changes in equity and surely how they are being developed and what additional disclosures we are looking for which will help us to understand how these financial figures are being obtained. Now, uh, in disclosures, we need to know that uh, is this co is this co uh, company is a going concern? Uh, will it cease in next 12 months or not? This is a big uh, question for the investors and the stakeholders because they want to invest in the company, and if they are not sure about the future, so it will be a great uh, problem in the fu future for them. So going concern is a basic uh, assumption on which the financial statements are being developed. Then we have uh, the how the depreciation is calculated, how the inventory has been evaluated. This is very important to understand because in gaps, the treatment of the inventory is different from IFRS. So if you are going to analyze a company in UK or in Europe, surely the figure will not help us as a tool. We should know that how the figure is calculated, what, what method is uh, used for calculation. And the same way when we come about uh, US and Canadian company, we have to see their rules and regulations. Now, 
Oh, what, uh, it's the prime responsibility of our auditor to express his opinion on the financial statements. Here we are going to discuss that how, uh, how auditors uh, uh, report can affect the decision of the investor and the stakeholders and what reports he can issue like he can issue qualified report when he feels that the uh, that the company is not compliance with the company law and they have material misstatements in the uh, in the reports and sometimes he can issue a uh, unqualified report which is which means that there is no material misstatement in the financials and these are healthy and uh, reliable and we can trust on that one sometimes you use uh, the emphasis of uh, an emphasis paragraph which will uh, which will say okay the report is accurate but somehow these areas are the gray area on which they have to focus on then we will discuss the other sources uh, apart from the financial statement which will help us to uh, to evaluate the company performance and its health now uh, if you talk about reporting mechanism generally uh, statement of cash flows is a statement which is very important because everything has to be in the uh, in the money terms <clears throat> for paying your short term liabilities your liquidity should be very strong you should have enough cash to run the show of the company so making a cash flow will tell us the in the liquid uh, form that how much uh, assets we have what is our strength to pay the short term expenses and liquidity will tell us that about the sustenance of the company so for that that purposes we make statement of cash flows which has three parts starting the first part is operating uh, part which is uh, any anything we uh, get as an inflow from operations like sales or the income uh, from various sources from trading activities mainly and uh, the expenses that we incur uh, for the day to day operations this this all comes in the operating portion then investing portion we have anything that we invest to uh, increase the capacity of the company we we need to have more assets so it will be outflow and we, if we have already an old asset which will sell so we need to have the inflow against uh, that one and in the last portion of the cash flows we have financing activities which is going to which is related with the equity portion of the uh, of the company in which the owner in inflows and the returns are coming uh, as inflow and if you have announced some some uh, outflow as a as a equity or the investment portion then we we will discuss the accounting typical accounting that it start from the voucher where you are going to put a double entry which has a debit effect and a credit effect surely we are not going to emphasize on how the debit as credit has been done but as a basic mechanism a voucher will generate and then it will go in a journal journal from journal we will post into a ledger and ledger has two effects one is debit and credit and from ledger we will kind of make a trial balance out of these uh, we, we will make income statement and the uh, the uh, statement of financial position another name does balance sheet and from this income statement balance sheet we will make a statement of cash flow and uh, surely additional disclosure will be apart from that one so this is all the accounting cycle in that also we are going to discuss certain types certain terminologies which as an analyst we should know as uh, which are the basic accounting terms like what are the assets what are the liabilities what is the capital and if you combine these three in the one statement it will go as a balance sheet if you take expense and income from the trial balance you will make statement uh, statement of comprehensive income that is income statement and anything related with the capital your net profit net lost capital introduced authorized that will be the portion which will come as equity in balance sheet so broadly there are five things in accounts which is assets liability capital expense and income everything comes in between what is an asset asset is a valuable thing it has two trends one is having short life that is less than one year we classify as current asset 
One is having a long life that is more than one year we classify as non-current assets. Same for the liabilities. Liabilities are the obligations to the company. We, uh, these are the owings uh, of two type. If it is less than one year, you have to pay some money to someone. It's a short term obligation, which is current obligation, current liability. And opposite to this, if it is exceeding one year, so this will be a long term liability. Now, uh, capital is the money which is invested by the shareholder. Another name is equity and uh, there's a huge investment and equity market that we will discuss in the later uh, portions of CFA level one course. Expenses are by definition those day-to-day -day incurrence uh, in which we uh, that is used for day-to-day -day expenses. Income we generate from the trading activities uh, which is purely by materializing the operations uh, using the human resource in the company and then we will discuss how the standards are set what uh, what is the the mechanism generally international accounting standard bodies adopt for making a standard and what general guidelines they have we have to discuss the FASB and we will discuss the IASB also and SEC uh, in US and their rules and differences amongst that. Concepts comes that why we because if we are talking about globalization one world one bank so why there is no one standard in all over the world why there is IFRS and why there is a gap so surely there is now the need has arise where people are people are looking for one standard, either they should go for IFRS or GAPS. So uh, why we should not commonize the, this, uh, this thing? Surely there are certain barriers to it because of the change of the accounting practices and uh, because of the concept, how they are being formed. Uh, this is we are going to discuss today. Then we will discuss the uh, concept how they monitor the regulation standards and what is the other details into it this is the main emphasis for the today for for today's lecture and uh, I hope this will clear the the concept for those uh, candidates who are not having accounting background but still uh, the essential knowledge that is required to analyze the financial statements and to understand the operational efficiency and financial health, the basic requirements that we need we will discuss in this lecture today.